Okay, y'all, today we're going to be evening out skin tone using this technique called frequency separation. It's a little bit advanced, and there's a couple of steps, so I think what I'll do is I'll put the steps also in a Word document just so that you can remember them and not have to um, re-watch this video over and over because it takes a little while to get used to it. But what it's going to do is it separates the lines on your skin from the color of your skin so that you can change the color of your skin and it won't affect the texture. It'll keep all of the, um, you know, little ridges and lines and stuff so that you still, like, you have a, a real face and not a plastic face. All right, we're going to start working with this girl. And the first thing you want to do is make a copy, two copies, actually, Control-J, Control-J. So you have Layer 1 copy, and I'm just going to rename Layer 1 Blur. And then Layer 1 copy, I'm going to rename Lines. That way you, you'll know the difference. Okay, we're going to start with the blur layer. So we're going to take the eyeball off of lines so that we can't see that one. And we're going to go down to the blur label. I mean layer. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to blur it out a little bit. So you're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll start with zero. I'm just going to blur it until her features start to look pretty blurry. So once her eyes look kind of like this, it'll be fine. So I'm going to start there. Mine's at 9.4. Depends on what picture you're working on. Um, if it's a really high resolution picture, you might have to go up more. Don't get this blurry. Um, if it's a low resolution picture, you might not have to blur much at all. But I'm going to st stick with somewhere around 9 for this picture. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to go to the lines layer. Put the eyeball back on the lines layer. This is where it gets a little tricky that you can't quite remember, so I'm going to write it down for you. But you go to Image, Apply Image, and now you're going to choose the layer that you just did, that blur layer. So we're taking the blur layer, and what we want to do on the blending mode is subtract. Yours probably is not set to subtract. And then you have to change the scale to 2 and the offset to 128. If it's not 2 and 128, it will not work. So what this does is it takes the layer that you were on, which was just her face, and then it's going to subtract her face from the blurry layer. And what you have left between the blur and the regular are the lines. Um, I don't know who figured this out, but it works. So then we're going to hit OK. And now we have just the skin texture and like her eyelashes and eyebrows and things like that, her lips. You have to change the blending mode, which is right here, to linear light, linear light. And now the combination, once this is linear light, the combination of this and the blurry layer underneath should make it look like the regular picture. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and click on blur. So I have both of these selected. And I'm going to drag them both into a folder. Okay, so if I click on the eyeball, you shouldn't be able to tell a big difference between group one and the background. Okay. We're going to open up the folder, and now we're going to start working on this blur layer. We're not going to touch the lines layer because we want the texture to, re to remain there. So we're going to go to the blur layer. You're going to choose the lasso, just a regular lasso tool. And go ahead and put the feather on about 15. So now what you want to do is you want to choose pieces of skin that have somewhat the same color. So I'm going to start choose like her cheeks here. You don't want to get way out here because this is white. So if you choose this white area, it's going to start blending white in with her cheeks and her cheeks aren't white. So you're just going to choose the, the, the apples of her cheeks. All right, now we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now we'll start with zero. As you start increasing the blur, you'll notice what it's doing is blending the colors together. Now if you get too much, see it starts taking all this white in there, so you don't want to get too much. 
probably around 20 is good. And then hit OK. OK, and then Control D. Now if I click the eyeball on the layer on the folder, you should be able to tell the difference before and after. OK, let's go back to the blur layer and we'll do the other cheek. Again, don't get this white out here because it's going to start um, blending the white in. So just get the parts of her cheek that are somewhat the same color. Okay, and then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it'll be set on whatever you already had it set on, so it looks good to me. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to do this part of her nose. Now, you don't want to do her whole nose. You just want to do, like, right down the bridge, I suppose. And then on the forehead, you don't want to get too close to the eyebrows. I'm going to get kind of close to the eyebrow, and I'll show you why. Because we have a feather on it, so it's not selecting just inside this line. Since it's got a feather on it, it's kind of selecting a little bit on the outside and a little bit on the inside so that it feathers out and doesn't have a sharp line. So if you get too close to the eyebrows or any other thing, like the eyeball, then it's going to blur some of that in. It doesn't look so bad right now, but I guess, you know, if I got more, you can see how it turns dark. It's because it's getting some of this eyebrow in there. Okay, and then, of course, if I were doing this for a magazine, I would probably, you know, zoom in and get all of the little places. For now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I'm going to look at this folder group. If I look at the before and the after, you can see how it looks natural, but it looks a lot better. Okay, I'm using Daniel's picture because now you're going to open your picture and Daniel volunteered. The hardest thing about yours is going to be deleting this green background. All right, let's try it. We're going to go to select color range. You're going to click on the green background with this eyedropper. And then increase the fuzziness. And then hit OK. All that does is select things. So now we're going to add a mask. Click on our mask button. All right, and then Control I. Now you can see that Daniel is somewhat see through. All right, so we're just going to take our little white paintbrush here. Make it kind of fuzzy. Oh, not that small. It's going to take forever. Make it a little bit bigger. All right, and I'm just going to start painting. Of course, we're on the mask. Painting it white because it had selected and turned black some of his face. You don't want to get too close to the edge because we're going to do something else for that in just a bit. Probably got too close over there, but that's okay. All right. Now, the edge of his hair is kind of see-through, and then the background is not completely gone away. We can tell if we hold down Alt and click on the mask. You can see how it's kind of white out here? This All this should be black. So, if you hold down Control and click on the mask, it'll put a selection there. I believe what it is selecting is his face and this stuff out here. So what we're going to do is select inverse so that it's selecting not his face and not his hair. And we'll go ahead and paint all that black because that should be completely black. And change the brush. Whoops, I got outside of it. Looks like it's feathered, so you're going to have to kind of be careful a little bit or else you'll get inside the lines like I did right there on his hair. But go ahead and paint everything black that you know should be black. All right, 
I'm going to control D. I'm just going to start painting black out here where I know that he's not. Then get all this black so that we're taking all the green away. This might be a long process because you might have to zoom in and get all these little crooks and crannies. But, um, all right, I'm going to hold down Alt again. I'm going to click back on the mask so we can see. All right, so I can see where I need to zoom in. Whoops. And you see where you'll need to zoom in. And I'm going to have to delete, or not delete, but paint with a smaller brush this area right here to get rid of the green. I'm painting black to get rid of the green. And then I'll have to go in and paint white on him to make him come back. So this will be the hardest part. It's making it look good. You might have to spend some time making it look good. Alright, um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not spending time making it look good, but you will on your picture because then, whoops, you're going to do the frequency separation on your own face. Alright, so after you get finished, then you're going to control J, control J. You will take that middle layer, take the eyeball off the first one. We'll call this middle layer blur. The second layer skin lines. Take this middle layer filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You're going to do exactly what you did a while ago. Um, oops, there's the bell. That means our tutorial is over. Then you're going to go to the lines and you'll go to image, apply image. You're going to go to the blur, subtract 2, 128, hit OK, change this to linear. Then you'll go to the blur layer and we'll start over with this process of doing filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, I hit cancel by accident. Okay. Oh, I forgot to put them in folders. Okay.